On this episode of Food News and Chews, Chef Jeremy and Sylvia are satisfying their sweet tooth at the Ruth Hunt Candy Factory. Then Chef Jeremy makes chocolate truffles infused with the flavor of mint julep. That's all coming up on Food News and Chews. Food News and Chews is brought to you by these proud sponsors. Alltech, helping farmers feed the world. Azure Restaurant and Patio, worldly influenced, locally inspired. Sullivan University, offering higher education for people with higher goals. Azure Catering, catering the most important events, yours. Critchfield Meats, fresh, high quality, all natural meats, guaranteed. Cheer. Yes, and she's <laughs> throwing chocolate, chocolate balls at me. And that, well, at least <laughs> the kind this. that I like, right? Kentucky bourbon balls, oh, especially. Man, look at this. So chocolate's kind of uh, that's the kind of where we're going to right today, right? And when it comes to desserts and sweets. Yeah. I kind of yeah. You have some ideas about well, that, right? Three things when stand like out chocolate. when it comes to desserts. One three things chocolate. You like chocolate three times over, huh? Yes, chocolate is the, the the major dessert that I like. Then there's something fruity, or there's something caramelly and nutty. But mm -hmm. chocolate, you know, reigns supreme over all desserts, right? Even though uh, we don't eat it as much in this country as other countries. Well, let's go back a little bit into history of chocolate. Okay. Invented in Mesoamerica, well, not the <laughs> Mall of America, although That's I'm sure you can find plenty of right. chocolate in the Mall of America, but it was invented in 1900 BC mm -hmm. and um, it has become over the centuries and yes. whatever and, and uh, brought to modern world in Spain mm -hmm. in the 16th century when they added sugar and the rest is history. Right, that was the magic part, adding <laughs> the sugar to it uh, because before it was kind of like coffee and more of a, a hot drink elixir that kind of cured your ailment so to speak back in the old, 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 old days. Old, old, But then yeah, let's add sugar to it now it's like, oh, that's the first cup of cocoa mm -hmm. and uh, magic happened ever since then. So. Mesoamerica. Yeah. Is that like the Aztecs or something like well, that? Well, yeah, I mean Aztecs, Incas, the whole, yeah. yeah. But chocolate I, I has need been to research linked. that more. Actually. This is cool. Uh, chocolate has been linked to health effects, right. and some of those are cardio kinds of things, mm -hmm. and tooth enamel. Supposed to preserve your tooth enamel, but the most fun part of all is. Yeah. It's an aphrodisiac. That's right. It does get your Jeremy blood moving. Like That's right. <laughs> it does get your blood moving, so to speak. So. Yeah. It, so it's it associated does. around all of our sweet dates, our sweet holidays, yeah, right? Yeah, like Valentine's mm -hmm. and the holidays and the Easter and everything all involve chocolate, which right. is uh, such an interesting thing because, you know, it's also very fattening. Well, that's just when they added the sugar to it that became fattening. Before it was it's not. Large, but you know, that's why it's linked to romantic holidays, because mm -hmm. there are other ways to burn calories besides getting on a trip. That's right. You've <laughs> got to burn off the cocoa butter somehow, right? <laughs> that's right. Hey, another thing about chocolate uh, that was always, I thought, maybe a myth, but I actually researched this. What? It is harmful to dogs. You know, I keep you know, hearing that don't feed chocolate to dog. dogs. Why is that? Is yeah, there, there is a theobromine. <laughs> I mean, I don't You're know. way too smart for me. So. I know. I went and got a PhD in science just to do just this for report. Chocolate. <laughs> Theobromine uh -huh. is something that we metabolize apparently, but dogs don't. Well, there you go. So don't feed your dog chocolate. Well, that, all those bourbon balls you feed your Yorkie. Well, I always blamed it on the dog that you know that they were gone, <laughs> but I, I never actually fed them to the dog. They they went somewhere else. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. Hey, let's talk for a moment about chocolate in movies. Sure. Because, you know, chocolate kind of pervades our there entire lives. There was a lives. movie called Chocolat, yeah. Chocolat. Uh, yeah, that's right, I'd forgotten about yeah. that one. But probably the most famous thing, uh, clip that was shown throughout the holidays was uh, the Lucy and Ethel episode. <laughs> Or if you recall, they're they're put it. They're trying to find a job because uh, they accuse uh, Ricky and and Fred of not appreciating them. So oh. they go out and they find jobs, and and Fred and Ricky mm -hmm. do the housework. 
So they're in this candy line, and mm -hmm. they're like stuffing it because it goes too fast and all that. But people have seen the Lucy and Ethel thing. Well, I mean, I saw clips of it, um, you know, throughout my life. That was, but uh -huh. it's, you know, kind of the infamous chocolate scene where they just start, you know, yeah, eating, they start eating and eating and stuffing it. It's, down it's there hilarious because plus. who can eat that much candy, right? <laughs> uh, but I imagine candy factories being like that, yeah. that kind of production scale. Oh, yeah, they just got it on the, And the other famous chocolate movie is Willy Wonka. Well, that, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 1971 movie. Right. It's become a cult favorite. Mm -hmm. And it's about the young man, Charlie, who wins in the end because he's honest and he inherits the chocolate factory. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, I mean, I learned a lot about uh, chocolate in that movie in terms of like the mixing and combining. I mean, at, on an amateur level, yeah. from a kid level, it was really good. So. Yeah. I can still see Gene Wilder's gigantic <laughs> eyes and the little girl blowing up into a blueberry. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, I'm kind of curious on how this whole chocolate thing works and how candy <laughs> factories, because I am not a baker. I mean, I just don't do the whole sweet side of cooking. I mean, I do on like at home, but I would never like try to, yeah. you know, push my, my wares, my baking wares on somebody. So I want to see well, how this is you're, And this you're going to do something for us a little bit later, but these are bourbon balls, and I mm -hmm. think we ought to trace the origin of these, don't you? I can't go wait to go and check it trip. out. Let's go see what, uh, what it's all about. That's it. I've heard the place to go <laughs> is Mount Sterling. <laughs> That's right. Ruth Hunt Candies have been making bourbon balls forever, so we're going to go check those out. Plus, these little cream candies are just like... You know, they flake off and just melt in your mouth. Hey, Jeremy, I thought we had like three boxes of these. Where's the other two? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, they melted in the car, and then your dog ate them, I think. <laughs> we didn't be able to get them to the vet. <laughs> I've got to get home and do that. But in the meantime, yeah. let's go to Mount Sterling oh, on a field trip. Let's check this let's out. Let's go. Jeremy, you like my fashion look? You know, that's a great look for you, Sylvia. Yeah. You, you, need to, you need to join uh, in. You know, okay? I'm, I'm going to. It's the new fashion, okay. right? Hey, exciting. We're here at the Ruth Hunt Factory yeah. in Mount Sterling. Yes. Field trip, field trip. And we're here with Gene Wilder. I mean, Gene not Willy Wonka. Wonka. <laughs> it's Larry Kiesel. I love that movie. He owns this place. I know. It's, and it's like, this, I've been eating this candy all of my life at my house. And you know now I'm here in the actual shop, or I don't know, one of the shops, right? This is a factory. Yeah. This is a big operation here. There's oh, some amazing. big stuff going on. They have their own post office. I can't wait to steal all the a shipping ball. they're doing. <laughs> I yeah. know they have their own post office. It's amazing. Larry, tell me about and Jeremy about the history of this place. How did you come well, to acquire it? Where, how was it founded? Who's Ruth Hunt? <laughs> Ruth Hunt. I think it's an interesting story because it's one of those. Um, success stories for women in a time when women weren't sure. business owners that yeah. much. Yeah. Um, Ruth Hunt bought the business or started the business in about 1921. She started it in her home. She was had been making candy for her bridge club. They, Some of the people in her circle have played bridge for generations and um, they loved the candy and her friends loved the candy and so then she started making it in, in, in her house. That got a little bit crazy so then she bought a place where she had the candy making downstairs and they lived upstairs and then she finally built in the 1930s a uh, factory which is I think pretty interesting yeah. it, well there's a picture on the wall over there the uh, painting factory. of the original one mm -hmm. which was built before the neighborhood was built and then the neighborhood oh. built around it and at the time it was uh, before 64 was built so all the traffic east-west in Kentucky went through and right past her factory. Um, I love stories like that, especially when it comes to food, too, and the people that actually create. I mean, she had recipes, I'm sure, right? And are some of those original ideas and, and recipes still used today? Actually, most of them are, and really? a couple of the new products that we're making that they quit making for uh -huh. years, I found in an old recipe book, like our French paste oh, truffles. That's neat. That neat. Um, is an old, ancient recipe, I guess. How long and have you owned the place? Uh, about 25 years. 25 years you've been a candy okay, I bought it from the daughter of Ruth Hunt, who is Emily Hunt Peck, and um, she passed away about three years ago. Wow. She was a terrific friend Great of mine Kentucky and business. an incredible woman. Um, she and her mother really ran the business the whole time. She had never done anything but Ruth Hunt candies 
Wow. Hey, we heard a rumor that you even shipped to the White House once. We did. Right. Uh, it was before my time, Lady Bird Johnson <laughs> called. <laughs> and they, it, actually, Mrs. Peck was like me in the basement working on making candy. And they said, there's a call from the White House. And she was like, well, We got to get the back White on House. that, Sylvie. We got to get more bourbon up in Washington. <laughs> we do. So those bourbon <laughs> right. summits that, that have been going exactly. on. I'd love to go and see this factory. I mean, I'm. It's, this is completely out of my, you know, yeah. realm of knowledge, the whole candy making process. And this is an actual, you know, this where, is, this, it, is, this, is this is a fact. This is great. I can't this used to be a bowling alley. I love that. <laughs> we converted it, that chocolate we, and we candy. Converted it into a chocolate factory. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Only in this country. I love it. Right. Let's go. Yeah, let's go check it out. Okay, let's go check it out. So this is Candy Central. We have our, our shipping, we have been, this has been running mm, probably about 12 hours a day for the last <laughs> two weeks. Um, I'll show you where it all starts. You like big spoons, Jerry? I love big spoons. Go for it, All right, Junior, what is going on in here? Right? Okay, yeah. what we're cooking in this kill here is what we call a bourbon ball. Oh, wow. This uh, making here is going to make around about 1,800 to 2,000 bourbon balls. That is? Yeah. That's killer well, right there. Where's everybody else's? I'm going to eat those. <laughs> <laughs> right, but well, now this here is not totally different. These two killers here is cream candy. Oh, wow. Okay. Now I'll be pouring that killer pretty soon onto the table. Right. On it, and this has been the same as that in there. I just ain't had the cream to it yet. So far, so good. What I mean, it ain't <laughs> going off that table yet, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> this here gives us around about 1, 1,200 pieces when we get done with it. Uh, the all the candy that's put back here, this has been the hardest. There's no certain time to have one candy laid on the table. It's all done with the feel of it. If you take it off too soon, take it to the floor, it's going to make the sugar. If you leave it on the table too long, it'll be so hard that the floor will just burn and pour. So it's all done with the feel of it. Now, we don't throw nothing away, but 99.9 .9 of all this candy is made from heavy whipped cream, butter, and sugar. So if this batch here goes bad on me, I'll take it out of the back and have a top of it. set my timer for four minutes. That's how long we're gonna pull. Yeah, so this is the cream candy after it's set up and it gets sorted and wrapped. Each piece is wrapped individually. And right now she's wrapping cream candy. She's wrapping the chocolate covered cream. So it goes in there, goes through this machine. And then of course we're packing over here. We pack 14 ounce, two pound, three pound, and five pound tins. This is a caramel, and this is one of the original slabs that Ruth Tharcourt used when she started the company in 1921. February, uh, I say we, but because I think from this young lady, everybody in the building got their hands somewhere in the candy. That's why I started saying we uh, order about 30 or 40,000 strawberries. About this big, got the long stem, a special order from California. But they've got flying in from uh, California to Louisville. The truck comes back to this door here. We fill this thing full and two fridges out there. And then about two days, two and a half days, they're gone. Yeah. Month of November and December, we go through probably, well, anywhere from probably 700 to 1,000 pounds of sugar every day. 
I'll do about five to pounds of cream. I'll do about 20 or 30 pounds of butter. How'd you get into candy making? Uh, they just had to add in the paper. Is that right? And I just went for that? you and you. Mr. Keyes, I said, well, let you know something in a few days. He called me that. He, and you have Miss Mary over yeah, here. Yeah, Mary. She, yeah, she's been with us a little over a year yeah. now. Do you have to watch him on the bourbon and make sure yeah. he doesn't like I got to sample it once in a while, make yeah. sure he tastes yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, right. He has to sample it every <laughs> once in a while. So when does the good stuff go in? Uh, well, I'm yeah. getting ready. The good stuff's already. Well, no, the good stuff ain't in this one yet. Well, you'll know when the good stuff is in. Everybody has to be in. Is that marshmallow? Yeah, that's like a, it's called fondue. It's like a marshmallow cream. Okay. We put it in there, and she'll turn it on and start mixing it. And then she'll turn it. Well, she's already got her water around. This is like a double broth. It comes up so far, not on the candy, and then it just keeps the sets it right Sylvia, up. Sylvia, you better stir that, or it's going to burn. Well, no, you don't have to stir it. <laughs> <laughs> you might not mess it up if you stir it. Won't you add them? I would not want to be responsible yeah. for ruining no. 1,800 <laughs> bourbon balls. No. <laughs>
Hey, Jeremy. You look distressed and Norma. Okay. You know, I'm going to get some bread and okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Norma, hey, Norma I think, is a candy I think monster over yeah. here. I eat all the candy or something like that. I'm like, oh, there are. <laughs> we all have to check that out. <laughs> Oh, juror, it's been quite a time. I'm drinking coffee because I, I got to serve 30 days in the county jail. Right, for the no, loot you got caught no, with? Norma caught me trying to steal the bourbon balls, but I did capture <sighs> one whole box of them, and I tell you, I'm woozy from, yeah, from those that bourbon. bourbon balls. Well, they put a lot in uh, there, and it kind of inspired me to make our hey, own yeah. truffles. This will um, revive me. Yeah, I mean, I hope Take so. Take them to the county jail. Can Be I do that? Because, you know, this whole candy making thing has kind of been ma like kind of a magical thing for mm -hmm. me. I never understood mm -hmm. how it worked until I made troubles for the first time. I'm like, okay, that's really, really easy. Well, it's not easy to make that many that they do, but we can make these at home. What does um, truffle mean? I don't know. Is it like a French? Yeah. Oh, it's like, I thought well, it was like some... honestly, like truffles are a mushroom. They find on the ground. They're little black uh, guys. So I think that's where it got, it got you know, little uh, name was yeah. the, okay. the similarity. Truffle. And yeah, maybe mm, that was okay. it. Uh, so all right, we're going to make a, a bourbon uh, truffle. It's going to be called, my yeah, we're going to yeah. call it a, um, a mint julep because it's going to have some mint and some nice. bourbon. And it's kind nice. of a, you know, we could do this at Derby, huh? thing. So you're going to start with okay. a pound of chocolate. And use the kind you like. Milk chocolate, that's fine. If you want dark mm -hmm. chocolate, that's fine. I think it's good to use a little of each. Yeah. So half a so pound sweet. of dark, half mm -hmm. a pound of white. Yeah. Um, and okay. you're going to put that over a double boiler. You know what that means, Sylvia? I have no clue. So a pot of water <laughs> that is boiling and steaming, yeah. uh, you know, a mixing bowl, and the chocolate goes yeah. right in there. Why would you do that? Well, if you think about chocolate, you know, it's, it's very delicate stuff. You can break the cocoa butter, mm -hmm. you can really overheat it and make it grainy. So the steam is a nice light oh, way. It melts it, uh, so yeah, it's, it's gentle. Kind of a, you know, and you say, think it's gentle, but steam is the most violent form of cooking there is, but it's just <laughs> a nice little, you know, way to yeah. melt the chocolate. Oh, look, you can see them melting. Ooh. Yeah, you Ooh. can see them start to melt. And, you know, I've got a rubber spatula here, and you just kind of every now and then, you know, poke them a little like bit and bring them around. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, this whole truffle thing is so simple because all you need is, say, a pound of chocolate to almost a cup of cream, about three-fourths a cup. Mm -hmm. and we'll pour that right in there with it. Where'd you learn this, Jer? Um, You're just culinary all the way, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, this was... Hey, Jer, did you know that chocolate changed the world? How did chocolate change the world? Well, when, uh, remember, in Spain, uh -huh. where they introduced it in the 16th century, and what did they put in it that well, changed the world? Sugar. Sugar! Right. Sugar wars began. Mm -hmm. and everybody wanted sugar because everybody wanted chocolate with sugar. Right. It. <laughs> so I love how this is starting yeah. to melt, right? And you know, to see how, how simple this is, you just keep moving it around. Yeah. And I'm going to add. Can you stir it? Yeah, go ahead, help yourself. You stir it. And I'm going to add a teaspoon of bourbon barrel aged vanilla mm -hmm. extract. Okay. Um, incredible stuff, and it gives that really neat smoky finish kind mm -hmm. of you know, bourbon mm -hmm. flavor. Uh, so that goes in there as well. And we're going to wait till this becomes kind of one big mess. Big uh, mess of good melted chocolate. Oh, I love it. Do they make moonshine, cho chocolate moonshine or anything? Oh, we're doing that next, right? <laughs> you know, moonshine's coming in every flavor these days. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, look so at this. Once we get this melted, uh, we'll be set to go for the next step, which is kind of rolling them in cocoa, and we're going to use some crystallized mint mm. and sugar to give them that kind of mint and bourbon mint flavor. Mint and yeah, That's exactly. right. Hey, so, yeah, am I about ready to take my culinary uh, exams? Okay. You're getting there. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, that's really all you have to do, Sylvia. Oh, look every how now quickly then. it happens, too. This has only been like five minutes. Yeah, I could this actually is a do simple this. thing. You know, the, the only part that takes any time is waiting for this to set to the right temperature because oh, yeah. what you're doing is you're melting the chocolate to where it's malleable, but it also has to be, you know, the right ratios and the right temperature mm -hmm, so you can mm -hmm, handle it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. before it melts in your hand, right? It was fascinating watching all that chocolate be made, huh? Oh, I know. That was way beyond was like my being uh, in expertise. Willy Wonka. Yeah, I learned a lot. It was super neat. Yeah, we were like Lucy and Ethel, weren't we? We'll see if people <laughs> like our version. All so. right, what do you think, Jer? Oh, uh, yeah, everything's kind of mixed together just fine. There's one more part of this that gives it its sting that we like is now the chocolate is melted. We don't want to cook the bourbon into it. We want to finish right with raw bourbon. Mm, so you yes. have that raw, you know, alcohol flavor in there. We'll mix this up. Good. I'm going to go throw this in the freezer. Okay. And try not to let all this bourbon, you know, fume off. We'll keep it inside the chocolate. Sounds good. When we get back, we'll roll them up. Hey, Jer, that looks like a lickable bowl. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, I would definitely lick this bowl. Yummy. So, so check this out. So this is the, the bourbon and the cream and the chocolate that's been melted and then set back up in the freezer or fridge, whichever one you want to wait for. Yeah. But, you How know, long does it take about? Time? I'd say about a half hour. Okay. Uh, in the freezer, 
um, and then probably longer in the fridge. But uh -huh. you know, all you have to do is make it to where it's scoopable. And uh -huh. I've got a little, you know, one ounce scoop here. You can use a spoon if you want and just get messy and just roll it in your hands. But you're going for a round shape, right? Because these things are like little chocolates. They're good for, you know, Valentine's Day, anniversaries, all kinds of things. derby. And we're um, going to package them in this wonderful birthdays. little. Yeah, so this you're is doing this the, the sweetheart thing, pound. right? Yeah. So before we get messy, the last thing we're going to do is use I a little spoon get here. And I've got um, about three fourths a cup of cocoa powder. Okay. And a cup of sugar. With no sugar in it until you add that. Yeah. Okay. And then this is a crystallized mint. Um, For mint juleps. Yes. I buy this online. But you can also use uh, fresh chopped oh, mint or a mint powder if you want to. Uh, um, and or, so you know, uh -huh. do something else. There's, you could do green tea. You could do gold flakes. You could do That's different spices healthy. or cinnamon. <laughs> so this one, I did the, the crystallized mint because it kind of fits that mint julep theme, right? That's right. So That's what we're doing because this could be a derby gift. It, totally. totally. Yeah. Actually, I think that would be a great derby gift. So this is our, our yeah, coating, right? coming right up. Oh, so just... we're going to do a two-part process, Sylvia. I'm mm -hmm. going to scoop uh -huh. this. Uh -huh. And? Chocolate right into there and I want you to roll it around in the topping. And then once you're done rolling it around, just go ahead and put it in. And put it in, in these little, yeah. exactly. aren't these cute? You get these anywhere, right? Okay, yeah. is that good, Jer? Mm-hmm, perfect. Okay, there we go. Oh, oh, stuck a little bit. Nice. How nice, how nice. Oh, they're so pretty. Mm-hmm, not and bad, huh? easy. And that's I mean, simple. Guys, I can do this. And look you how are nice doing these are. This. Yeah, I know, look at me, look at me. I'm ready to stand for my exams. And I love it too, the, you know, the part about that you have to pay attention to is the ratios of the pound yeah. of chocolate to the one oh. cup. Because you want these to be creamy and not hard, but they also have to be set up enough to, to be able to handle them. So. Oh, and that's great. And we're going to have this recipe up on the Food News and Choose website, right? Always. Always, always for reference, always. right? Okay, Joe, look what we have visit. here. Look what we have. Good deal. That you. one's for you. Oh, buddy, it's going to go down the hatch. But look how sweet this is. Mm -hmm. It's a nice little thing. This spells love. That does spell love. It can be anything, as you said, romantic. Holidays like Valentine's or... <gasps> All the way. <laughs> mm. Oh, that Man. is so good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jer, let's go lick the ball. <laughs> oh, ma'am, you gotta make these, it's great. Okay, we'll see you next time. Food News and Chews is brought to you by these proud sponsors. Alltech, helping farmers feed the world. Azure Restaurant and Patio, worldly influenced, locally inspired. Sullivan University, offering higher education for people with higher goals. Azure Catering, catering the most important events, yours. Critchfield Meats, fresh, high quality, all natural meats, guaranteed.